on the Friday, so thank you for being here. Um, this is a very interesting se session, I believe, uh, about music, um, women in the music industry, and especially, specifically about um, parity in the festival. So, there has been a lot said, I think, but still there is a lot to be said. If we look at the statistics, we will see some later. You probably want to speak about that too. Um, there's still some work to be done. So um, we have we are very lucky to come um, with these speakers that we have here, uh, which all have a really brilliant CV and uh, a woman, of course. <laughs> um, so we have Anne, um, Anna Engler from Key Change. She um, Key Change is a very interesting uh, platform that I'd like you to speak about. When we'll give you, I would like you to introduce yourselves now for a couple of minutes and say why you, why you think it's important to be here instead of doing it myself. Um, so we also have Cindy Castillo from Madco, which I think you all know the festival. It's an amazing festival, uh, growing very very fast. And we have uh, Liana Rodriguez from Criterion Entertainment. Great to have her here too. And Cecilia Velasco from Marvin uh, Mexico Festival. And we have Susanna Fona from Waves uh, Vienna. Um, so, I am Erica from The Banter is a Story. I'm a psychologist in my work time and I'm a musician in my free time because you can imagine that doesn't really give much, <laughs> much money. But uh, I enjoy both a lot and I also have, I'm part of, a, of an initiative called Muses in which we try to promote also women in music. So, this is a very relevant session for me too. Um, if you would like to just speak for a couple of minutes and say what you think is, well, what you do and why you think it's important to be here. Hi, Erica. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. I'm Cindy from Macro Festival. I need a psychologist, so it's good to know you all. <laughs> and, um, well, basically, as uh, you are, I'm guessing most of you here already know the festival. Uh, I'm in charge of the booking of it, and uh, well, I think it's important to be here because you know I have been working in the music industry for the past 20 years, um, and as a woman, I must say it has been very, very hard and unequal in many ways, and the challenges you face as a woman in a predominant male uh, business are definitely a lot. So I think it's important to be here and to you know expose and talk about all these problems um, and you know so we can share experiences and so we can advance a little bit and maybe in 10 years from now um, everything will be better for us. Hello guys, my name is Diana Rodriguez, I'm head of Criteria Entertainment. This is an age old company. I used to work for labels for 25 years. Criteria Entertainment does marketing, promotion, and consulting. We handle public relations for um, festivals like Rio Fest, as artists like Enrico Muri as well. And I manage bands as well. I have Diamante Electrico, Draco Rosa, Florida Torace, and a couple of more. And I think it's important here because if you're not Part of the solution, you're part of the problem. So if you're not willing to speak out and hear out, then you know, obviously you're not being of help. Hi, um, my name is Susan Fenna. I work for Wish Vienna Festival. Wish Vienna is a showcase festival in Vienna, um, part of the Ines network as well as my communities. And um, I work there in communications, project management, and uh, production of the festival itself. And I think that, um, as Eric already mentioned, uh, there is already or was already said a lot about it, but there is not uh, not everything has been said yet. I think every every not like so very small piece of, of, of work you can do is really worth it, and everything fits together with new things. So, yeah. Thank you. Hi, my name is Cecilia Velasco, I'm in Mexico. I've been doing uh, for 
the last 17 years, with uh, Magazine, and now I have nine years with the festival, Festival Marvin, uh, from uh, Mexico City. Um, it has been like it's it's very it's very hard to, to print the magazine right now at this moment, and it has been very hard since the first uh, day. And I think it's, it, it has to be with with the way we work, with the with the way we can work it out, and things happen. You no, know? things happen if you're a woman, if you're a boy, if you're I don't know. And and I think that the magic happens to women too. You know? So that's what happens. Um, hi, my name is Anna, and I'm based in Sweden, Stockholm, and I'm here representing the Key Change Network, which is um, a movement um, initiated by the PRS in the UK, um, and it's all about empowering women to change the future in music, but also to um, encourage festivals to sign a pledge to um, achieve a gender balance 50-50 uh, until uh, 2022 and so far it's uh, more than 130 festivals in 23 countries that have signed the pledge and um, so that's great uh, but there's still you know work to do in that area um, and I also consult in other equality projects like the Spotify Equalizer project um, I've also created this um, um, community with music producers in Sweden and we're trying to gather them to show that there's more than you think. So right now we're 100 music producers, only in Sweden. And so yeah, I'm very passionate about changing the music industry and because I think if everybody acknowledged that there's a problem, we can all work together. Well, the first thing I wanted to ask was about uh, precisely that. Do we all acknowledge it's a problem? I think we do. Um, but why, why is it a problem at the moment? Um, if, I think you can just speak whenever you want, if, if you think that's a good system. Um, but, so I would just want to talk about why, why it's important that we can acknowledge it's an issue and it exists, but why, why is it an issue? Why do we care about it, really? Do you want some hard yes, explicit here? <laughs> uh, I think it's very important to understand one thing. Like, for example, I, was, I actually I've read a lot about Key Change, um, you know, project, and I think it's very nice. But for me, festivals or concerts or whatever. Or focusing on that is a bit like focusing on the cherry on the top of the pine, okay? Because I think what we need to think is not why there's not many women headlining festival, why there's not, no. The, pro the question is why there are less women doing music. Why, when a woman grows up, doesn't think about music as, you know, a career, a, a, something that she could do and something that she could live for and off. Why women, you know, when we are 10 years old, we don't grab guitars as much as men do. And this is basically because during the past generations, the stereotype of men being a rock and roll star has been there, while the stereotype of women being rock and roll stars hasn't existed. In fact, for example, I'll give you like a tiny, maybe a bit of stupid example, but that's pretty well what I'm trying to say here, which is if I see a drunk, drug guy on stage, everyone thinks, oh, how cool, he's a rock star. If we see a drunk, drug woman on stage, everyone will think, wow, she's a slut, she's a mess, oh, this is disgusting. You know, it, it's a it's not a, a nice example, but I think this summarizes, you know, what we're living. So I think the important thing is to actually educate next generations 
woman most of all in the fact that hey music is also for you you can do music you can live in music you can travel with music you can you know everything I, I, did I explain myself well yeah. I so. some time. I, I've slept four hours <laughs> very clearly I'm worried because I was a bit drunk yesterday when I played so I'm thinking did they think that about me <laughs> probably yes do, do you want to answer to what she said anyone do you agree? Do you no, I think she's right on the dot. I think that for me, you know, I'm, I'm very happy to see very empowered and powerful women across the board. And it's great for me to see Itzel heading the Vive Latino in Mexico and Laura heading the fest, the personal fest in Argentina and all these amazing women. But the truth is that they really do want to hire more female acts, but there's not enough female acts in the pool you know, to pick from. So the problem is, as you say, it's in the roots and it's empowering, you know, girls to be not only rock stars, you know, engineers, producers, roadies, technicians, whatever it is that they want to do. And um, I think with that, also taking away the stigma that female acts don't sell. And that's a big problem because it starts also with the media. And we, we developed acts. And for me, it's very hard because I'll have a male act and I'll have a female act and they'll be more or less on the same terms but the feedback on the female is that oh, females don't sell and that's from the get-go so I think that's where it starts and I think you're completely right and you know, I'm, I'm very pro-women but I'm very pro-picking women that are empowered and that have the right skills to be picked I don't want anybody to hire me because I'm a girl I want them to hire me because I'm the best one that's on the field everybody, it's hot Um, I absolutely agree that the, the problem or the solution um, lies in education, absolutely. Um, I don't know if you know Girls Rock Camp, I think it's a European thing, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, they're trying to um, get together girls who are in music, who want to be in music, who want to create a band, who want to play an instrument, who already do play an instrument, but do not have girls around to create a band, for example. Um, and in, in Austria, this network is like gorgeous. They, it's Pink Noise, it's the institution behind the Girls Rock Camp, they are organizing it. And um, we did our festival, like, uh, with, we have a lot of technicians, obviously, sound engineers, light engineers, um, stage engineers. And our technical um, producer, he decided <coughs> to um, create a team only of women in the sound, light, and stage engineering. So he went into all these networks and he created a team of 33 women, whom um, a lot of them came from uh, this Girls Rock Camp, Pink Noise, all these areas. They created a really nice network and um, in the end I did some interviews with some of the girls and uh, it turns out they founded bands in Girls Rock Camp, they created the network, they knew each other from this um, network and also we had a really nice outcome because our um, um, supplier of technical equipment they didn't have any women in their team so when we told them like we wanted to work with women only for this edition they were like okay um, that's a problem and the year after suddenly they had some women at least in their team they were really 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 professional so i think quotas and like this 100% women only thing is not the long term solution, but it may help to show or to make those women who are really powerful and really professional visible. So I'm not a friend of quotas on the long term, but I think for the moment um, they are part of the solution. To make those women who are in the music industry as artists, as managers, as bookers, wherever, more visible and uh, to be role models for those who come up. No, I just wanted to say that I agree with that. I think, I mean, I think this part of, um, let's say, ideas are a first step. I think it's what, I don't know if you call it like this in English and Spanish, it's called like positive discrimination, you know, which is basically encouraging uh, this kind of, um, ideas which actually discriminate a different part but 
you know, to help to help it improve. So um, I do think it's it's definitely. I mean, we have to start somewhere, of course. I don't think it's the root of the problem, but I think we have to start somewhere. And I, I'm really interested in in Brock, how do you call the society? I, I didn't know it. Like Brock something the girls for again. Yeah, I didn't know about this. Um, Association, I think it's great because you know, in Liverpool, for example, or well, or me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I also manage bands. Um, Twenty years ago, or even ten years ago, I was probably the only woman in a stage. You know, and I always say the same example: when I get to a stage, is a I'm the girlfriend of the singer, b I'm the girlfriend of someone from the band, c I'm the sister of the singer or the family of someone of the band. Uh, D, I am a groupie. Yeah, I'm a groupie. Or E, maybe I'm the press girl. Okay, that those are all the options I have. No one thinks, oh, she's the boss, you know. And for me, you know, seeing the the, the way this, the the society and the music industry in Spain has changed in the past years, up to the point that, for example, in Matco, we were a, theme, a team of 30 people and we have 20 women. It's amazing. So I think it's encouraging, you know, to have associations that can definitely show up. Would you two like to say something about quotas, for example? I could just add like a little thing, and it's uh, when describing bands, um, like female bands or female rappers or artists are always described as female, and I think that's um, just adding to this culture of separating uh, females and all the other bands. I think it's uh, important just to say, oh, this is a rock band, it's not a female rock band, or this is just a rapper, it's not a female rapper. Um, yeah, just a short little. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> go, go, go for it, go for it. You know, I, I, I constantly think about that, okay. basically, because awesome. my partner is Australian, okay? And, but you have to realize one thing, which is that English-speaking countries, you don't have sex for things. But for example, in Spanish, for us, everything has a sex. Like the table is a girl, the, I don't know, the car is a male, and you know, so... But I do agree with that. I think a lot of the chauvinism in our culture comes from there. Mm. Anyway, just wanted yeah. to point out this. <laughs> Is it an issue if you don't if you don't label something? Then it's a bit difficult then to. Uh, well, I can't say if I agree or not because that's not my role. <laughs> but um, can there be problems if you take away certain labels? Then how can you try to uh, balance it and fight discrimination? for example, in this case. Um, sorry, to, to label a band as a female band, I mean, I think it's silly too, actually. I've, I've said it. But uh, <laughs> I was trying not to say any opinions. But maybe to a certain extent, I, well, I don't know if it applies here, but if you take away labels from things and there's a discrimination towards that label, then, you, then it's difficult to sort of pinpoint certain aspects of pinpoint what the problem is. But I just wanted to ask them. But I think it's part of like a bigger structure. It's not just, oh, this problem, that problem. It's everything in combination. So I think all these subtle, you know, labeling and uh, separations and all of that just needs to um, vanish. Um, I think we need to see the whole picture and not concentrating on little issues. Just like you said, like start where where does it start? Where's the root of the problem? Um, yeah. Is that, is that an answer to your question? Yes, thank you. So I have some quotes here from people. Um, so yeah, we we have talked about the problem existing, uh, again, what can we do if we do decide to, to book more women on, on festivals, for example, then how do we do it, taking into account certain things like, I don't know, maybe there are many less women um, in bands, or less artists who are women at the moment, it could be, what can we do about it? I mean, how do we start solving the problem? Nice. Okay. Okay. I can also go first. <laughs> um, 
I can only give an example. Uh, we have, uh, apart from OEC Vienna, we are also working together on a festival. It's called Electric Spring. It's a small festival in Vienna. Uh, for the city of Vienna, it's only um, Austrian electronic artists. And uh, since the uh, beginning of the festival, we had female creators of the festival. Um, that changed. That did not change the booking because it was from the beginning on. But you could realize that the, the lineup was very balanced, without any quotas, without any trying to do it better or whatever. It just happened. Um, nobody told them what to do. Nobody told them like, please try to do 50-50. Last year we had 70% uh, female and 30% male band. So that just happened, and I think that right now that's not a must, but. For us, it seemed like it um, that you may s look more into into the deep, let's say, not take the most obvious um, options. Just look deeper. I personally think that there is so many gorgeous, great professional bands, artists that are men and female. I don't think that there is not enough female artists that are really great. And in Austria you can see that rising like, above and above. Also Eurosonic this year, so so many um, young girls being on stage, super confident, super professional. I think there is a lot happening. And you may start at the booking process. That's, that's what we... Uh, could see so you were talking about having more women in the decision making, for example, no, like, in, like you were saying in Madco you have 20 out of 30, and that in the end in turn makes a difference towards the booking, even without thinking about it, no? If you have women who are making the decisions, then that can influence. Any other? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I mean, there's statistics on this. You can, you, we know how many women are working in the, in the workforce uh, versus men. We know, um, you know, we, we can just look at the statistics and try to improve them. And I would encourage everyone to check out the, the manifesto that Key Change released in the EU Parliament the other day, which includes uh, statistics and uh, recommendations for the music industry and for governments um, to um, you know, be part of the change of the music industry. And it's quite simple. It's you know, educate role models um, who, who, are, who are the decision makers and just look at your own network. Look around you. Who are you talking to? Who do you know? Who do you call? Who do you book? Um, it's I think it's, um, I mean, in my opinion, it's quite simple, but I understand that it's all about different personalities in the end. I started with my niece. My niece is a guitarist. She's seven years old. So I go to her school, go to her music class, and make sure that every girl in that music class understands that it's music. It's not he or she. The other thing that the company does is that we only take female interns so that we can mentor them and we'll, you know, kind of show them, you know, how to work it and let them grow with a professional or a set of professionals. And the last thing we do, and I think you should look into it, which is great, is a platform called Ruidosa. Ruidosa was started by Francisca Valenzuela from Chile. It's a um, multidisciplinary, so it's arts, music, dance uh, platform. It's a festival. It's all inclusive, but it's female-led. So you'll see the roadies, the techs, everything else, it's all female. It um, now has uh, shows in Colombia, in Chile, in Mexico. But it's a great effort to give visibility to the professionals as well. So I encourage you to look into that. <laughs> no, 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 I was just thinking, I didn't have much to add, I think, um, you know, um, I, I definitely don't believe in, in, in the 50-50 lineup thing because as she was saying before, as a woman, you know, I want them to, I want them to respect me because I do, I, I offer something that is, has, has quality 
And unfortunately, I think our society, at least in Spain, okay, I'm not saying the rest of Europe, where of course you are years, uh, you know, not behind, the opposite of behind, uh, ahead, yeah, sorry, from us. But at least, you know, the sensation that that would give in Spain, I believe, is like, oh yeah, she's there because someone had to put her there. Or she's there because uh, she did a favor to someone, you know, something, that's, that's the mentality. Yeah, or because she's pretty, she's hot, she's there because they put her there. That's the mentality that we have here. So that's why in Spain I don't really believe about that being a solution or even the first step. Uh, but I do think that the fact of us finding quality ads and offering that to our audience will definitely improve uh, the, the, the female experience around music for, for all the consumers of music. And um, yeah, and I think that's it. I mean, for Macro and Macro, we definitely try to book as many women as we can. Most of all, because we are four bookers and we are two women and two men. So um, we try to we, we try to avoid um, any kind of sexist um, communications, advertisement language. Uh, you know, like you will never see a poster of the festival with a woman in bikini, just to put a random, you know, um, example of it. Um, we also try to have a uh, woman in every single part of the festival, not only on stage, okay, and you know, like all, for example, or all, all our artistic production team are women, uh, in the stages you will see women, everything, you know, so I mean, for us it's more about encouraging the quality and actually showing everyone that women can do quality stuff too. We're not there just because we're pretty, we're, I don't know, uh, you know, whatever. And, uh, and yeah, I think that's, that's for us the first step in our current society in Spain. <laughs> well, can, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but, and I can only speak for Sweden because that's where I'm... Uh, working and that's where I live, but um, just comparing to music producers that I work a lot with, um, three years ago I asked people in the music industry, can you name a music producer who is female? And nobody could tell me, you know, maybe one or two, or is she an engineer? I'm not sure. Maybe she's just executive. I'm not sure, blah, blah, blah. So people in the music industry couldn't even name a music producer, and now three years later we have a hundred music producers who are all qualified because we have, you have to um, go through um, like a, um, uh, yeah, uh, like a process before you're, um, you can enter in our community. So we have a hundred music producers in only Sweden and we found them just because uh, we attract them. And I think it might be the same thing with female dominated acts and female artists that they are out there, but they just need to be found. And also, there's another problem, which is you're not going to go from amateur to pro in one night. You need that time to, you know, to play the, the medium-sized stages, and you need to practice, and you need to have those years of, um, you know, um, getting better. And I think that might be missing for female bands, because they don't really get the chance. Okay. <laughs> No, I was going to say, like, for me, um, when I say quality, I don't mean technical quality. I think artists are, bo are, are born with something that, you know, like, it's like you're either born with it or you're not born with it. And as a booker, you know, and actually as four bookers we are in the festival, we spend, like, entire nights, like, looking for bands and hearing everyone, every, every, every single thing we receive. I receive maybe, I don't know, 100 demos a month. And I listen to all of them, you know, all of them. I just can't stop listening to them because I do I feel bad. <laughs> um, and what I want to say is um, that for me, quality is a different thing. You know, quality is for seeing in that artist the the future. You know, like being able to identify the talent within that person, and then you know, saying yes, 
I want to deliver this talent to the world. I want to share with this girl or with this boy or this man or whatever they're doing. Um, um, yeah, that's it. And I, you said something before that I wanted to say something, but I forgot already what was it. <laughs> If you want to repeat again, maybe you can... <laughs> not, not quite that. Um, okay, so I wanted to ask you also about headliners, since there is a big difference between, you know, festivals who have the commercial headliners, there is the, the gender imbalance is even greater there, which is a bit ironic if you think of, of what music people listen into, really, because you have these... Um, these uh, headlining acts that are guitar, rock, classical men playing guitars, and that's not actually what people are listening to now. So why why does that happen? Why can't we book more, or at least it doesn't even have to be women, but just a different type of headlining act seems to be like some kind of tradition that we have. But I don't know. I want to ask you about that. <laughs> So let me see if I understood the question. What you want to know is why headliners and festivals are not more modern? Yeah, are so many produce many men in the process too. Well, to be honest, I mean, y you have to understand also that at the end, you know, this is a business. And being a business doesn't mean we win money from it, because in fact we don't. <laughs> but what I mean is, the fact of me selling 80,000 tickets is what allows me to invest in all the upcoming talent and all the upcoming bands that I actually want to promote and make them grow, okay? So when you, when, when you, when you are going to do a festival, you have to think about many things, which, in, in which of course, obviously the money is involved because you have a lot of expenses in production and blah, 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 blah. And believe me, the fees of the artists are definitely not something cheap, you know? So, um, so at the end, you also need to say, okay, we, we need to have artists that will sell tickets, okay? And I think the wrong concept is to think that Festival bookers only have male acts because they are the ones that sell tickets. Because that's not true. I can try and book whatever um, Florence the Machine, Madonna, um, whatever you can think of, of. You know, it's like like Lick Lee, whatever. You know, all sorts of bands at all sorts of levels. And the truth is that I, when I say, okay, I'm gonna place an, off an offer for um, Lick Lee, yeah. There's 30 more festivals all over the world and half of them pay double or triple that I pay, okay? So at the end, it depends on um, a lot of many things that, you know, that, that actually make the final lineup. So I might spend my entire life trying to book like Lick Lee and maybe I won't do it. I will never have her because there's always a festival in Tokyo or another in New York or another in whatever and they just pay more than me. So, you know, I think it's a bit also about all the parts involved, not just, you know, like, like, just thinking that festivals repeat the same headliners always is, is the superficial thought of it, because there's a lot of work behind and a lot of different things that make that happen. Am I here? Here? I, I, mean, so. I don't know if I'm, sometimes I start talking and others I think. I think so, yeah. yeah. And when I think that when we say a bigger pool of talent, is not that there isn't talented female acts. The thing is that, and I respect that she's a booker. In the end, it's either she's a female or male booker. She's a booker, she needs to sell tickets. But there aren't enough female selling acts out there, and I think that's the problem. It's how do you develop more acts that can sell tickets, that can fill the venues that they're going to be interested in, not because you're female, just because they sell tickets. And this conversation we had with Itzela Dio Latino, with Laura, with Francisca, and it's how do we bring about more acts from the bottom to the top that can headline, selling tickets. Because that's really where it's at. You know, how do we convert this and make it happen? Give them a chance. 
We, we, we yeah. trust in you for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do you think that maybe also um, by having in your lineup um, women, even if they're in the small writing or the medium writing, that's making already, it's already making a difference, no? For sure. For sure. For sure it is. I, I acknowledge that it's very difficult to find headliners <laughs> anyway. I mean, but, yeah, yeah it, it is difficult, but to find all of the headliners, not only the female ones. So, you know, it's just a process. And, and having small acts or medium-sized acts or any kind of acts, as long as they are quality acts, I think is positive. Because, you know, you're showing to the world that we can do things too, and we can do good things, and you can engage with, with our things, and you can, you know, follow us and blah, blah, blah. Um, what I can, like, um see in Austria is like the smaller festivals, the mid-sized festivals, actually they do have a lot of female headliners, there's no problem in that, because I think there is a lot of mid-sized artists in that area, but when it comes to the few bigger festivals, they like of course they need to watch their economics in a different way and they have to sell a lot of tickets, and like uh, this question made me think why why the lineup of those festivals? It's not. It's not only about gender, but in general about diversity and and um, trying to do something different. And it's kind of a lot of the same in the last few years. Let's say the lineup doesn't change too much. You can kind of the same. Um, one of them is it, it's called Nova Rock. So apparently there is a lot of rock music, but the other one is not. And you would never see like big pop acts there, which I really don't understand because big festivals such as Primavera and stuff, they do it and it works like, really good. But uh, I don't know Solange, for example, or, or I don't know, bigger ones, St. Vincent, whatever. And it's a, yeah. But they have like the same acts over and over and over again, and they are male, white, rock. That's true, I mean, there's some, some structure in there, some pattern, that I, I couldn't say why. I really thought about the question, but mid size, yes, but really big headliners, they maybe choose me. I think we have to ask the world that question. Because, you know, at the end, we as festivals, all we do is, we book artists. The question is, why the world just follows the same type of artists? Why do they just consume the same type of artists? Why are they all, you said, male, white, and whatever? Yeah. <laughs> Old? Yeah. So, you know, like, that's, that's what, I, what I would think about, you know? Like, why is the society just following this kind of stereotype? But once again, I think that comes to education. Hmm. Okay, so I think we have about 15 minutes left, and I would like to give the floor to the audience in case you want to ask any questions, but I don't know where the microphone is. Is anyone here? Okay, great. So, does anyone have any questions for the speakers? Questions, please. I questions. want to talk even more. <laughs> <laughs> questions for Cindy, please. Hola a todos. Hi, everybody. I'm Carolina Gomez from Bogota, Colombia. And uh, I don't know if this is a question, maybe it's some kind of observation or some reflection that I have here. I was yesterday on a speaker panel, I was speaker in about Latin American festivals and uh, cultural agendas, and I was the only woman at the panel. And this subject came to the, to the panel. And I thought about this panel, and I said, why there are no men there, you know? There's always women at this panel. I've been there, with, uh, like you, in uh, gender, uh, and women uh, kinds of panels and discussions, and there's only women there. And I always want to hear men's voice in that subject, you know? Uh, 
they never ask questions, they just hear, but they're never talking there. So, yeah, but, but what I'm trying to say is that when you moderate a panel, when you are invited to talk in that panel, you can just say, well, let's invite some men to a discussion, you know? Because I know that we need to raise the voice. I'm one of the women in my, in my circle that I do that. But I also want, want to hear men talking about it. It's just that. Does anyone want to answer here? The, the comment? <laughs> It's a bit the same as, uh, as she said, but is it like when you um, when you make this like a thing? I mean, uh, I'm sure there is a change needed, but if you make it like a big thing, wouldn't it be like in this man world, like, oh, it's one of the other feminism things? And is it like, um, I, I don't know how to pronounce it in English, if you, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, that, that it will get like annoying if like what what she says only women do this and it's like no we need more women we need more women but then it might get a little bit overhyped or something it's like the same thing when you have like a special uh, day for for gay people it's like if you keep doing that is is there maybe a chance that it gets annoying or, or you inspire more women, we have to make, make more chances for women, but it's something that we have in the interview, you know? It's not something that we have to make a deal about, you know? We have to, we have to still go, uh, it's, not, it's not something that we put in here, but this is our time. And I think we have, I mean, I love to work with men, because they are simple. We, 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 <laughs> I mean, we, we make a mess about everything, no? So when you have a man and, and, and they say, it's easy, okay, it's easy, no? I mean, for me, it's like a hysterical woman, no? And then he makes like, like a balance in my life, no? So I think we need men. I think we need more women in our chances. I think it's very complicated to work with women. And I think it's very complicated to work with men, no? I mean, it's, it's like, like, an, uh, like a balance that we need to find and that we need to, to go, no? To, to, to make it happen. No. <laughs> For me, it's like... If I could say something. I don't think it's weird that the, the initiative comes from women because it's the women who are affected. Uh, it's, men are not going to rise up and say, oh, there's something wrong here. Uh, because it's not affecting them. Of course, it's coming from the source. Uh, but now, like, it's, come on, it's 2018, everybody needs to work together, of course. But also, I think women have a voice in this because it's, it's, we need to, we need to tell everyone else how it feels and how it's affecting us. Um, so I don't, I don't agree at all that it's difficult to work with women or that it's, it's some, you know, difference between men and women at all. It's just um, where the, you know, where where's the source? So, yeah. Don't worry. I mean, the goal obviously would be to um, just call ourselves all humans and no gender and no whatsoever. It's important for whatever you do or want to do or can achieve. But unfortunately, it's not like this. I was there as well. I was just wanted to be called a human, and the rest should be somebody else's business or not. Um, but we're not there yet. And I think, like, um, for example, like decades ago, there were no women in the Viennese Philharmonic Orchestra because they were not supposed to be there. 
So the first woman who came in there, he had, she had to struggle, she was like, she had to fight, she had to go for it, like, a lot. And now it's completely normal. It's not an issue. And the goal is to not make an issue out of it. It shouldn't be an issue if you're male, women, white, black, whatever, gay, or not, whatever. It shouldn't be an issue, but it is right now. And I don't think that things will change uh, by sitting there and waiting for them. I agree. Somebody needs to do something. I agree. We all do. We're still here and alive and we're in this panel talking, you know, and it has taken me 20 years of mostly suffering to get here. If any woman would come to me right now and say, Cindy, how cool is your job? I want to do what you do. I wouldn't have the guts of saying, yes, do what I do. Because I've had so many bad experiences as a woman you know, that I don't even feel I should encourage another woman to, to be in my position. And that is something we need to think about. So, you know, just the fact of being here and overcoming my thought of, I don't want to encourage no, anyone, you know, to, to go through everything that I, yeah. It's, it's doing something already. So I think we're all doing in our own way, some more than another, but you know, we're here. And that's the main triumph. Thank you. We have another question. Yeah. Uh, question and comment, maybe. I wanted to say that um, I really hope it's annoying. Um, and I hope it's annoying until um, it's not a problem anymore. And I think one of the big issues is that as girls and women, we're constantly being told not to be difficult, uh, not to be annoying, that we have to be nice and things like that. And I think that's also a big part of the problem. So I really hope it's annoying. Um, and I wanted to say something about um, key change. And I think, of course, you're right. The headlining festivals, that's, that's the tip of the iceberg. But I think key change is um, um, about a lot, a lot of more things and creating awareness about this and also creating an awareness um, for the audience. Because that is what they see and that what, what they perceive. I think one thing is to have that conversation and going into where the producers and everything, the composers and songwriters um, within the industry, but it's also important to, to create more awareness um, for the audience about this issue because uh, I think a lot of the times they don't even notice until you tell them. Haven't you noticed that it's always male acts that are headlining festivals and that's it's one part of the um, problem. So I think um, it's not only a conversation you should have within the industry, but really go beyond that. I, would ask, I think Key Change should do a festival tour, yeah. educating the people, really. Good idea. I think that's, yeah. that's like, you know, you should have your own like place and promote, you know, yeah. women and everything that's happening and actually promoting the artists that are female within yes. that, those festivals. Yeah. I mean, just, just I mean, all of you, if you're a booker, just go to keychange.eu and there's uh, all the keychange participants and it's, it's 60 women and half of them are artists and half of them are business uh, professionals. Just, you know, do a little homework and read about all of those artists. They're all incredible and great. So, do that. So, uh, actually, I can answer a question earlier. Uh, so, I actually started Women in Music in Valencia. It's an organization that started in New York and Los Angeles and Atlanta and stuff. And uh, I started the branch uh, last year as part of Berkeley. And, uh, and I, sadly, I realized that I was the first male committee member of Women in Music. And uh, it's, it's sad to think, right? Um, but yeah, I feel like we definitely need more men. And, and I think why men don't aren't approached more often about the subject is because we're, we're thought of as uh, not authentic, or we don't have the credibility because we're not women, right? Um, so I think I think if we can figure out a way of uh, allowing men or, or having a better or more open atmosphere for them to be more inclusive uh, and less of a divide, it's like oh, women versus men. No, it's yeah, we're, we're in it together. We're in it together. And then, yeah, but I guess I just want to say that. Any comments from you? There's another question then. Good morning. Um, I think the point is um, what you said before, is uh, education. 
because we have all different perspectives, we are of different countries. Um, I can tell you in Portugal in this moment, the population is 52% uh, women and only 48 men. So at this moment we feel a change and for me the point, when I choose my human resource for the company, is not, is woman, is man, is black, is white, have or don't have um, quality. For me, the point is quality. Um, and I think, education why? Because you need to give the same opportunities for the people grow up, and then you choose uh, the, the people for that. And when I, I, I talk about people, is because for, uh, for us, everyone is equal. Only for you, you understand the, the difference in Portugal and in the company, because we have, we have more women. In our company, the only department that we have more men than women is the technicians. Okay, I only have um, a stage um, um, director uh, as a woman, and light sound guys um, is a, is a all men. But what we are feeling there is in school now are more women getting to this kind of departments and areas to, to work. And I, I know that maybe in five or ten years will change a lot. I can tell you that I receive like um, maybe 50 CVs per week. And uh, I was now looking at the phone. Um, 44, this week was only women's uh, CVs. So I think also um, the perspective it depends on the country and uh, the evolution that uh, you, you have. Because I know uh, where I come from. I was from a, a country that was very traditional, that uh, man was working and uh, the woman stays at home cooking and take the, the kids. And now it's totally different. Um, and for me, that, that is the point. Uh, we cannot have the same rules or the same process uh, to every country because we are at different levels and with different perspectives. So what we need is help each other because uh, I was the same thought and I was telling that, okay, it's not any man who can talk uh, in this panel. Um, but uh, don't forget one thing, we have a mom, we have sisters, so we care also. <laughs> Do we have any more questions or comments? Only from women, please. <laughs> okay, hello. So my question is um, whether you think that uh, you, you were mentioning before that um, women, uh, well, uh, you were talking about um, selling, you know, selling tickets, uh, like women who sell tickets. So my question is whether you think that depends on um, also uh, festivals and what, which part of the industry, you know, kind of uh, take part in that. And um, yeah, and if you think that, uh, also second question, if <laughs> you think that there should be a more public funding, especially in countries like in Spain, whether you can feel this, this um, uh, main difference between genders and um, yeah so basically whether you think uh, this um, well as Catalina was saying before I think um, obviously key chains and organizations uh, on that on that um, way are making obviously a change but I feel that sometimes there's there's something missing like for instance like lots of lots of the artists I discover I do it because I, I look at Glastonbury or you know the festivals the booking um, people bands, people bands. I don't want to say people bands, but yeah. So yeah, sir. Is is that them. a question for me? <laughs> so basically, can you say it in Spanish? Because yeah. we, we couldn't understand what you were asking. Oh, okay. So, um, so, sorry, in Spanish, sí. Yeah. Tell me. Tell me. Eh, bueno, si piensas que eh, los festivales también forman parte de como hacer esa parte de curación de de um, qué banda también va a posicionarse como no talento, como no, eh, bueno, mm, super éxito, ¿no? Y eso es una, una parte. Y otra, sí, eh, obviamente España es en desventaja frente a otros países por tener esa cuota menor en festivales 
y obviamente no hacer esa función de, de tanto como, no sé, catalizador de tendencias, por así decirlo, como puede pasar en dos países. ¿De hacer esa cómo? Esta última parte no te... No como te... catalizador de tendencias, como puede ah, pasar sí. en otros países que ya tienen una cuota más alta, como puede ser UK, uh, Suiza, bueno, todos los países que ¿Cuota están... más alta en general o de mujeres? De mujeres, mujeres. Estoy intentando entenderlo, ¿eh? espera un momento. <risa> A ver, I think what you're asking is how can the creation of the festival help to increase the, the in the process, yeah. Help to increase the tendencies of more women being in festivals? Yeah, not that much uh, that, yeah, as well. Just um, like when you say what well, a woman, like a musician is successful, it's because of many reasons, obviously, but there's also press, promotions, and also I think in, in Spain we're really like fascinated by, by, fascinated by um, you know, with festival, you know, with festival that artists have, has played. So, I mean, just taking festivals as part of the process of the artists just becoming more successful as well and, you know, yeah, increasing their cachet and whatever. Well, I think festivals definitely are a promotion tool within the career of an artist because at the end, you know, you are giving them an exposure that otherwise they wouldn't have when they are growing up as a band. You know, if you're a band that you sell 100 tickets, you know, the, the investment you can make in your promotion or the investment you can make in making your band growing is, is proportional to, to your income. Um, while when, a, festival, when a, a small artist or a small act, sorry, go plays in a festival like ours, for example, they get the same exposure as a headliner would get, you know? So definitely I think that helps, um, that helps bands to get, to grow and to get a new place. Um, however, I think that the beautiful thing about music is that when, you know, if I want to sell hamburgers, I will just put a hamburger store in the main street of uh, my province and I'm sure it's mathematic that I will sell 10,000 more than if I put my hamburger store in the street behind the main street, okay? Well, in music, um, fortunately and unfortunately, uh, this cannot be controlled, so it is something intangible that your music connects to people. I cannot say, if you do this song like this, like this, like this, you will connect with people. Because, you know, many people have tried to do that years and years, and actually, I don't know, Black Eyed Peas then came and did this song that had nothing to do with the pop structure, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and it went massive. So what I want to say with this is, um, since we cannot control that, the best option for any artist, aside from, you know, going to a festival and, and obviously getting exposed, is to have good songs. And that's what they should invest in. If you don't have good songs, you have nothing. No matter how much, how many festivals you play, how much exhibition you have, how much money you invest. If there are no songs, there's nothing. And that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> I, I hope I answered your question. Yeah, totally. It's just because sometimes you hear that expression like, um, you know, it's like, no, we don't, we don't have that many women in our li lineup. No, no, I'm saying in, in any particular case, but sometimes I, I hear it. No, it's because, you know, it's, uh, the audience, that, you know, doesn't want it or whatever. It's like, what, how do you know the audience doesn't want to see that if you haven't, you know, uh, like told them about it? So that's, you know, that's what I was what I was trying to say, like, it's obviously within the process. Yeah. I think music is magic, okay? This might sound a bit romantic, but it's like that. Um, when a song connects, it just connects, you know, and travels, and, and, and becomes viral, or whatever you want to call it. So, at the end, it's all about that. I, as you already know, I used to work with Russian Red, for example, and Russian Red, is an artist that just 
did like probably the worst produced album ever in the history of Spain, and and she, but she had one song that suddenly connected with forty thousand people that went and bought forty thousand albums. So so you know what is so. But could someone tell me, oh, she's there because she got exposed in many festivals? No. She, she didn't even, I mean, at that time she didn't even, I mean, she hadn't played not even one festival. So at the end it's all about music, you know? The rest of us were just tools to make that music go further. Okay, thank you. Well, I think we don't really have more time. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the contributions. Um, so, well, that's it. Thank you. Thank you to the, to the speakers first, and also thank you for being here. And I'll be around if you want to know my opinions, which are not very relevant, but then I can, outside of the moderator role, I can give you them. And, and that's it. Thanks a lot. <laughs>